I had some government men in today to talk to me about my special, you know, knowledge, right? I, I'm at the University of Chicago, and I am alleged to know certain mysteries about finding lost treasures. And, and they, wanted, they wanted to talk to me about the Ark. Oh, no, sorry. There weren't any government men because, you know, there's so many arcs out there. Some of them shoved into, you know, government uh, warehouses, which we, we're probably sure that was still there. And then there's this other arc that's out there that seems to be about citizenship, which I'm not sure is the kind of arc that we've been talking about. We realized, we realized here on the Mosaic arc, we, we needed to explain a little bit about where we found it. Welcome to the Mosaic Arc. Whoop. by counterfeit arcs out there i can't even do my own tech properly tonight you know usually it's just oh my giant you know tech team of me and kilt right so welcome to the mosaic arc <laughs> you know is it don't you get don't you get tired don't, i mean seriously seriously what 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 do, what do we have to do to get some respect around here don't you get tired of having <laughs> all of these fake arcs out there? I, I, I'm, I'm beside myself. I'm so, so mad. And, and the government, you know, what the, what, like people with billions and billions of dollars looking for an arc that we're going to tell you where to find, you can find. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's very confusing. We have to, uh, we have to deal with the the Indiana Jones version. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to deal with that. that when the Indiana Jones is, is is closer the, to some and things then, than sometimes people realize, but yes, it, it's Hollywood. Uh, so of course, there's no I, layers. <laughs> yes, many layers. Well, I discovered that there was an ARC in Australia as well. I was so shocked. There was some media thing. <laughs> it was called The ARC. It's like a government media podcast or something. The government can't, <laughs> men came and talked to you. I get it now. They're, they're, they're no. Oh, no. Okay, they're not. They're checking us. Nobody worries about the, us. Nobody. Did, did you know that? Okay, so. Nobody cares. I, I, I don't want eggs. <laughs> I post, you know promos on my social media for our our episodes and last week's episode got a a a, a warning on facebook can you believe it oh, uh, really? yes the, the facebook facebook <laughs> tagged it for my my promo for it saying you know did would you know would you sell your soul to the devil for a, your job and apparently that counts as spam I, i'm not sure why right it's like are there lots of jobs out there being offered by the devil <laughs> we were talking uh, we were talking about theophilus which is you know a marian miracle story. Ooh, maybe it was the marian miracle yeah. part. Uh, you know i can i can get in way maybe they don't i was gonna say maybe they don't want everyone <laughs> rethinking their contracts <laughs> oh well, that for sure right who who have you paid who have you paid in order to to um to, 
Mm-hmm. T- to have that job, right? What, 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 which con, which Rumpelstiltskin character? One day, okay, so the, we, 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 we should start promising what we're going to do in the future so that it like, it, it generates interest and gets lots of people. We've got to talk through mm-hmm. Shrek, right? And, and the, and the Shrek mm-hmm. episode where Rumpelstiltskin comes and gets him to sign over his day, right? That was a really mm-hmm. good one. That was a really good one. Yeah, that contract, that yes. contract stuff. We can do that. You will be happy yeah, to hear we are not under contract whatsoever <laughs> with this live stream. Nope. <laughs> I think I'm unemployable now. <laughs> and I, have, I have the yeah. one job in, you know, cu- current culture that hopefully means you could learn, you know, practice speaking. <laughs> Uh, you know, the, the continuing professorial privilege of trying out ideas and, and actually being trained to think about difficult arguments and narratives. And I, I, it turns out I, 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 that was like over, Wait, overkill. What do I you think. mean? You know how to do that. You know how to do that. Uh, you know, I, I have this license to teach apparently. I'm a doctor, right? That's it. That's like, that's literally oh, what it means. <laughs> teacher, doctor. I'm a doctor of philosophy, which means I am licensed to teach mm-hmm. philosophy, apparently. But, you know, that that mm-hmm. co- covers a wide range of topics, including, and not in my circumstance, studying mm, the interpretation of scripture and stories in scripture and images like the Ark, mm-hmm. which I think is in scripture. I'm pretty sure. I think it is. I mean, you think it you I could it you could think it's just in the movies, right? And, and not something in scripture. But in mm-hmm. my favorite line from of course, Indiana Jones and the Lost uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, whatever it's called. Raiders of the Lost Ark, right? Um when the yes. the government men show up, I love when they show up in the in the in the the lecture hall that's not a lecture hall cuz it's like a dining hall or something. I don't know. It was so funny. And and he's saying, you know, it's the, the, the lost ark. And the guys are like, oh, and, and Indiana gets to pull out a big book and says, any of you guys go to Sunday school? Man, that was my moment. <laughs> the frustration of uncatechized <laughs> uh, audiences. Yeah. 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 Well, any- well they didn't even. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, even if they did go to Sunday school, did they ever get taught any of this, you know? That's a very good Sunday point. Sunday school That's a- in which place and time. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I have I have an acquaintance who once told mm-hmm. me that she grew up Presbyterian, like I did. I, I think mm-hmm. she's about my age. I'm I'm not entirely sure on this. And the ladies tend to disguise their their um decades. Um well, it's, once you hit a hundred, it's embarrassing. Oh, well, okay, fine. Things, That's so. true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this, 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 this fridge. Who knows how old she is? She could, she could be, de- gener- you know, centuries old, right? Um, mm-hmm. That she said that she had grown up Presbyterian and was very disappointed in her Sunday school because they did nothing but sort of tell stories with felt. I, th- I think she means like little felt cutouts and stuff. And this was this was so okay. dispiriting to her. And and I and, and the thing is, I think I think that I mean there there's a sort of genuine quest and desire here, right, to find the lost ark because she was so disappointed in her Sunday school with the felt that she became Jewish. If you can do that, can you do that? I, I, I mean, there's a, there's a bit, there's, well, I mean, there's <laughs> debates out there, right? About it being, being yes. a people with a lineage in a particular part of the world and, and, and that's, but apparently you can also be Jewish by, I, I, I was, I was teaching today in class in Eurosiv, I was teaching the Council of Trent and we were desperately trying to figure out mm-hmm. the difference between Lutheran idea of justification by faith alone without the works of the law versus the Council of Trent Sixth Session, um, 1545 in January, no, 1547 in January, when they d- determined that those heretics that say that you are justified have confidence in their salvation simply because they're justified by faith. And I, th- I think they're just already irritated at the, the uh, way the Protestants are going around saying, I'm saved. 
and know it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I sympathize as a Presby- mm-hmm. as a former Presbyterian. It can be really irritating. But then the Presbyterians got all worried about, like, whether or not you were of the elect and how could you prove it. And... And there and the, and thereby hangs a you know the collapse of Sunday school I suppose. Mm, everyone needed those elect ID cards. <laughs> needed some ID to prove that you were elect or not. <laughs> this is this is um, entirely topical to our 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 situation right now, right? Because everybody wants to find the ark. Right. Yes. Right. I mean, I, yes. I think I think that's yeah. I think that's why people are dying. Because they want to find the ark. I, I don't. I, I say that a little um, too gleefully in this moment. I think it's actually true. I think people are dying mm. because they don't know where the ark is. That makes sense to me. Yes. Yes, that makes sense. Ooh. <clears throat> this 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 took a rather sobering turn. How like <laughs> literally this is the most important stream we've ever done. So no pressure. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, so I won't get my felt. I won't get my felt out then. I'll keep the felt down there because I was gonna get out the felt, you felt. know, <laughs> just in the spirit of uh, <laughs> Presbyterian Sunday school. Well, I no, mean, I mean, do. so we won't do felt, felt. Felt maybe felt don't work, but it's like what what Indiana does in that moment is like he brings out a giant book, right? It's got a picture in it, which is cool. Mm. I still want to know like what book that was if they actually went and is I, I it's not Haydock Bible because we've got some images to show you all from that so it's not the Catholic one with the cool pictures from the 19th century and it's got a big clasp on it and you know the 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 Israelites are carrying the ark and it's got like power of God coming out of it and people are dying mm. because this is something like a directed energy weapon or something <laughs> I'm not mm-hmm. sure what the ark. They're imagining the ark is supposed to be, but you know, the armies fell before it. Um, um, Marcus Brody is is really good at that, you know. And 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 then they of course come up with the wonderful knowledge that Indiana. Oh yes, we do know what Spielberg did with his age in that scene with Marion. Everybody, you should know that. They 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 wanted mm-hmm. to make Marion a little too young for that <clears throat> relationship that Indiana had with her we were perfectly aware of that um abner ravenswood of the university of chicago see i clearly i clearly i, I although it's not called the Oriental institute anymore which i think it was you know would they they would have been referring it to in the 40s in when the movie set uh it, mm-hmm. it's now i it's isac and i can't remember what that it means anymore Institute for the so study. Disorientated the institute by removing Oriental from the name. Yeah, although it's still like carved <laughs> on the building, so you can find it if you know where to look. It's kind of like, kind of like the Ark, the treasure hunt. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. say it's like we, 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 we have images here. Here's the, the, the Ark they find in the movie. It's glowing, right? So good, mm-hmm. and they found it in the Well of Souls in Tanis, buried in the desert. None of that's in the Bible, so you know Indiana can't be using his Bible no. to prove it. <laughs> yeah, it was a bizarre, it was a bizarre way of finding it buried in an Egyptian tomb, and well, buried in the desert, and they have to take it to an Egyptian tomb to open it with the special magic stuff that has a a lens on the top, and they're using light tricks and all sorts of things. It all became very complicated. <laughs> It was more like a magic ritual. Like if we do the ritual correctly and we say the right words, the ark will open. Mm. Then we'll have the power. Yes. Well, mm. Belosh is there, and his he's got his, the the ephod on with the gemstones. We don't yes. know whether he has Uman and Thuman on his shoulders, right? But he's 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 meant to be dressed as some kind of high priest so that he's appropriate to. to I mean, they don't they re, they clearly never read the scriptures. Don't touch it, for goodness sake. Try opening it. Good grief. I, 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 I think we, we clearly need to do some reading in the scriptures so that people know what they're looking for if they happen to stumble upon it in an Egyptian desert so that they don't get their faces That's melted probably, off. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. <laughs> oh, look, I have a Bible. 
<laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe there's some lessons in here to be learned about where to find the ark. This, this one, do I have pictures in this one? Oh, I have some maps at the back. But there's Christ on the cross by El Greco. The visitation. Oh, this one's topical. This will be topical for our, our, our lesson tonight. Um, but I don't seem to see any pictures of the ark. There's one of St. Peter at the front. We're, we're just going to have to go on the pictures that I have in, in, the, um, in the stack here. There they are, the young men carrying the ark by, well, through the Red Sea. It looks like that, that they don't have the ark when they pass through the Red Sea. Um, hmm. That's a, that's a, that's a, no. that's a little ahistorical. Try this is Tiso, right? He he did all that. We've talked about his images before. That he he goes to the Holy Land in the 19th century and and you know researches everything very accurately. But of course, he couldn't have seen the Ark because nobody knows where it is. But we all know what it looks like, right? We all know we all know that the Indiana Jones one. It's got the box with the poles and the. How do we know what it looks like? Hmm. All right, so we have a drawing of it apparently by the sea, but we know that it didn't go by the sea, at least not through the Red Sea. I don't know what he's drawing there. Okay, let's try this one. Oh, we've got a priest with the ephod on it and somebody else with him bowing before the ark. I'm not sure any of this is accurate. We're, we're really in trouble now. Do you mean that the Bible didn't include pictures? We don't have photographs of it? Apparently not. It didn't draw any pictures for us. <laughs> no. Okay. So we do have, here's, oh, here's the Haydock Bible. We've got the tab. This is more accurate, right? This is the Catholic Bible from the 19th century. B apparently mm -hmm. um, President Biden has a copy of it because he used it to swear his corona uh, coronation, <laughs> his inauguration oath on it. Um, <laughs> uh, Freudian ick sl slipped there. So here we have the tabernacle in the wilderness. So that, that is, like, and, and maybe the ark, maybe the ark is in there. Right. Do, do you think about the tabernacle much? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I do. That was the, uh, the special tent where the ark was placed. Yeah. We, uh, we, we've, we've spoken about this in previous streams, but the tabernacle is, uh, the beginning of the Israelite religion really in its more, uh, <clears throat> organized in ritualistic form uh so yeah i think about the tabernacle quite quite a bit actually the uh the beginning of the israelite religion after the exodus is the uh the creation of that tabernacle wait but you're christian why do you think about the tabernacle isn't isn't this this old testament stuff <laughs> that's that's now irrelevant <laughs> Well, I mean, no. <laughs> You're gonna, you have some, some justifying to do. I, 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 no, this, no, I, it's like you claim hmm. to be thinking about the tabernacle and yet it's there in the desert with the Israelites. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So why would, why, why would we have a, there's a picture of, there's tents, there's, um, the, so the the tabernacle it's actually this big like enclosure right with um yeah. hides held up with pillars and and only the pre only the levites can go in the in the enclosure and then there's yes. another tent inside this is very indiana jones i mean they're in like the archaeological mm. dig and they've got their tents and oh wait no okay so so they're there in the desert maybe if we have another picture Oh, look at this. Here's here's the furniture of the tabernacle, right? So there's more than just the ark. Mm. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. More than just the ark. More than just the there ark. There were a lot of things inside that tabernacle. All, all covered in gold, mm. for sure. Yes. yes. Lots of gold. Lots of gold. <laughs> and, and gold, I mean, <laughs> a got, lot of gold in that tabernacle. Incense holders and tables and tables for incense and a candelabra mm. and... Mm -hmm. and um, so, so the ark. You need to see the ark in this context of the tabernacle and all of this other furniture. It's interesting that when in Indiana finds the ta the ark, they only find the ark, and they don't find any of this mm -hmm. other stuff. Okay. It is. 
All right, all right. So here we so I think maybe have another picture here. Oh, here here is the Holy of Holies. We have the high priest. And there's some smoke and cloud, and there's the, accurately I think here showing the the candelabra inside the Holy of Holies, and the smoke is filling the space immediately above the ark. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay. Do I have one more picture here? Oh, look, here is, I think, I think maybe we finally found a place where we can like get a, 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 a fresco from Dear Europa, which is a synagogue. Now we're in good mm -hmm. shape, right? So we have the candelabra. Okay. Oh, no, maybe this is showing the temple, but there's an, maybe there's an ark in there. I'm, I'm not entirely, but let's go back to, let's go back to the Holy of Holies. Okay. How do we know what any of this stuff looked like? Because you just said we didn't have photographs. <laughs> yeah, we're all the pictures. Well, the uh, this this system this is the this is the Israelite religion. Mm. The tabernacle is the Israelite religion at the time that it's created. So, why I think about it? I mean, first off, Egyptian Egyptian Christians have a very vivid recollection of the events of the Exodus. Mm in our liturgy because obviously it's all about leaving egypt so the, Egypt <laughs> <laughs> so the egyptians celebrate leaving egypt if you can think about this as a as an interesting uh and a really interesting religious reality because uh the people that enslaved the hebrews and are now celebrating the the liberation of the hebrews from the from the yoke of pharaoh so <laughs> okay that that is a bit mind bending carry on <laughs> it's a bit it's a bit mind bending <laughs> um so obviously the exodus is really important in the egyptian world mm. <laughs> and local uh, local local event i i think what you're saying right it's a, exactly. it's actually egypt yeah, yeah. yes yeah exactly so uh, that that story of moses being raised in egypt and then leaving to go and live in the wilderness mm. and returning for the exodus to save israel to bring the tribes out of egypt and then through the wilderness of course that leads moses to receive the instructions for constructing the tabernacle oh we have instructions we have a description mm -hmm. Yes, thankfully, we got a description. We didn't get pictures, but we got a description. Ah, let's read it. All right. So so for everybody who didn't go to Sunday school, we're going to do this like really, I don't know whether religiously is right, because this is not a liturgy, right? And 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 as, yes. as women, <laughs> we're not allowed to preach to you. So guys, we're just reading. And yes. um I, we're obviously teasing a little bit about the degree to which people pay attention to this stuff. I can promise you, and we do have proof of this. In, but well, here I'll, I'll go to. Um, you may not read this, these these texts all the time, but I can promise you that medieval Christians did, and the early, some of the earliest Christian um, illustrated manuscripts we have. For example, is this one? It's a manuscript called the Ashburnham Pentateuch, which means it's only the Pentateuch, right? It's only the first five books. And it is illustrate illustrations of all of these events from Genesis through um, Deuteronomy, right? Uh, with some very mm -hmm. interesting images in Exodus with the attention to detail that we can see carrying on in those 19th century Bibles of wanting to show, you know, sort of what the furniture looks like here. I'm, I'm showing a picture with the the tabernacle and it's got the the ark in it with the these two the winged angels right the cherubim on either side that that seems to be fairly consistent and then we have here this one's actually a little more schematic from the codex Amiatinus, which is the oldest complete latin copy of the the bible in latin which was made in northumbria in the seventh in the the, the seventh eighth century when um, um bede was there and it is a completely schematic. Probably those images that we get in the Haydock Bible in the 19th century are modeled on, oh, for example, this one, right? Because the Codex Amiatinus okay. becomes very, very famous in the 16th century when um, the, the printing press comes along and the, the um, Catholic Church, after the Council of Trent, wants to make authoritative versions of its, its, its books, and they have this one. Right. So if you think you know what the tabernacle looks like, 
fake bead in his community in the 8th century, right? And they read these texts that we're about to read very, very carefully. They want to understand exactly what this this tabernacle looks like, what the furniture in the tabernacle looks like, and of course what the ark looks like. I will not read the whole thing. I'm just going to focus on the um, the ark, right? So this is um, Exodus. Where did, I've lost my place because it go, the descriptions go on and on and on. There we go. Okay, Exodus chapter twenty five. Okay. Um, and the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, "Speak to the children of Israel." that they bring first fruits to me of every man that offereth of his own accord, you shall take them. Oh, right. You said this already, but let's just h highlight it. Um, Moses is mm -hmm. on sign on the mountain. <clears throat> There's um, fire yes. and smoke and clouds and, and everything. The people are down at the bottom of the mountain and, and he's up there talking to God. And God is, the Lord is giving him very, very detailed descriptions of all of the stuff that he wants made for his worship. So we may not have photographs, but we have measurements. <laughs> God loves math. Mm -hmm. Do you guys realize God loves math. He loves giving very detailed measurements and descriptions and um, materials that they're going to use and the ornaments and all of the, the design that goes into creating these objects, right? Okay. So, mm -hmm. and these are the things you must take, gold and silver and brass, violet and purple and scarlet twice dyed and fine linen and goat's hair, and ram skin dyed red, and violet skins and setum wood, oil to make lights, spices for ointment, and for sweet-smelling incense, onyx stones and precious stones to adorn the ephod and the rationale. The ephod's the breastplate that the high priest wears. Mm -hmm. And they shall make me a sanctuary, and I will dwell in the midst of them. So primary claim you've said this, this is the Israelite religion in the, in the wilderness. It's, I will dwell with them. I will be there with them. Mm -hmm. It's a big, it's a big house for God, a tent, right? It's a tabernacle. It's a tent for God. And, and the Lord will be there with them in this sanctuary. According to all the likeness of the tabernacle, which I shall show thee and of all the vessels for the service thereof, and thus you shall make it. Frame an ark of setum wood, the length whereof shall be two cubits and a half, the breadth a cubit and a half, the height likewise a cubit and a half. So it's an oblong box. And thou shalt overlay it with the purest gold within and without, and over it thou shalt make a golden crown round about, and four golden rings, which thou shalt put at the four corners of the ark. Let two rings be on the one side and two on the other. Thou shalt make bars also of setum wood, and thou shalt overlay them with gold. And thou shalt put them in through the rings that are in the sides of the ark, that it may be carried on them. And they shall always be always in the rings, neither shall they at any time be drawn out of them. And they shall put, thou shalt put in the ark the testimony which I shall give thee. Thou shalt make also a propitiatory of the purest gold. The length thereof shall be two cubits and a half, and the breadth a cubit and a half. Thou shalt make also two cherubims of beaten gold on the two sides of the oracle. Let one cherub be on the one side and the other on the other. Let them cover both sides of the propitiatory, spreading their wings and covering the oracle, and let them look one towards the other, their faces being turned toward the propitiatory, wherewith the ark is to be covered, in which thou shalt put the testimony that I will give thee. Thence will I give orders and will speak to thee over the propitiatory. So the, the lid is the propitiatory, the mercy seat. And the Lord will speak mm. from above the, the the cherubim, right? He'll be enthroned mm. on the cherubim. And from the midst of the two cherubims, which shall be upon the ark of the testimony and all things which I will command the children of Israel by thee. So that's what all of the images are trying to show there's the, the box lid and the two cherubim which face each other and the lord speaks from above the cherubim he's enthroned on them mm -hmm. there's a lot of gold there mm -hmm. yeah there's a lot of gold inside and out it's complicated technology 
and the seton wood everyone talks about how the seton wood is is good because it it doesn't decay it's it's mm. it's very well weathered and so it's a um I mean, it does. It does sound like the kinds of things we find in the Egyptian tombs of these wood wood objects covered in gold. Hmm. If they're coming out of Egypt and they have the technology that they've come out of Egypt with, yeah, they're bringing Egyptian techniques with them through the wilderness because they've been there for so long. They're essentially culturally Egyptians, so they have the same technology the Egyptians right. have, and they've been exposed to Egyptian art for four hundred years. So all of the temple imagery of the Egyptians that have been exposed to this, all the idols of the Egyptians that have been exposed to, the hieroglyphic system, the writing, the language, everything. Mm -hmm. they're, at this stage, essentially, they're culturally Egyptians. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, so maybe it's actually accurate that in the Indiana Jones they find it in Egypt, although that's not the reason it's there in Egypt, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> in the story. Right? I, yeah, no, no. Uh, but it's a good nod to the to the uh, the origins of this technology mm. and this artifact. It was built by people that uh, were essentially Egyptian in their um, uh, in their aesthetics, I suppose, isn't it? In in every way yeah. except for making an image of 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 mm. the yes of the godhead. Yes, yes. This was the only thing that they were permitted to create in order to uh, worship towards. It was the Ark. Well, in in um, that sense, the the Tisa where they're bowing before it makes some sense. We'll go back to that. Mm -hmm. um, although it, the way he drew it, they're bowing to the Ark, whereas it's it's clear that the idea of the the cherubim and there and the thing is, I I could do this if I'd like actually completely done all my cross-referencing, but people are going to be weary of us anyway. <laughs> the Lord sits enthroned on the cherubim. It's in the Psalms, right? And yes. enthroned on the cherubim here means it's like he says he's going to, he's going to, um, that the propitiatory and the oracle and and thence I will give orders and will speak to thee over the propitiatory and from the midst of the two cherubim. So the Lord is telling mm -hmm. Moses he's going to talk to 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 be present on those cherubim and speak from that cherubim. So they are they, they there is in the sense his throne, this yes. gold throne, but there is no image that the Lord is it carved out of right there's no graven image of god because he's going to speak mm -hmm. out of the chair out of the out of the cloud or the 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 yeah and and that fits with what the in yes. the in the Hadock bible we have in the in the holy of holies and there's that cloud and the glory and in out of the he speaks out of the glory over the cherubim so in fact in the movie yes. when they have the the bot the it opens and the 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 you know the ghosties come out and this the flame and everything comes out of the box that's completely wrong that's not where the lord was no there's no ghost in the box it's not a coffin in that sense <laughs> there's no ghost there, yeah, there's no ghost in the box there are no ghosts in the box this is not like the poltergeist <laughs> <laughs> it was it was that tech in the movie right i remember yeah. poltergeist and it's like yeah the yeah dee, 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 gah, right you know yeah and everyone's face is ah, melting off like yeah. melty faces i never could watch that and it's so completely ridiculously wax right it's like okay fine but yeah so yeah. the lord sits enthroned yeah. on the cherubim and um when we have we have this is that was the pattern showing in exodus 25 and then in exodus 37 we have the the craftsman Bazelial, who makes the ark and he does it according to the instructions that he's been given, right? Shall I shall I read this too so that everybody has it in mind? Yeah. Okay, so this is Bezelio make at the ark. And Bezelio made also the ark of Setum wood. It was two cubits and a half in length, and a cubit and a half in breadth, and the height was of one cubit and a half. I think a cubit is 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 from your elbow to your hand, to fingertips, right? So it's a man's arm. Yeah. Um, and he overlaid it with the purest gold within and without. 
and he made it to a crown of gold round about, casting four rings of gold at the four corners thereof, two rings in one side and two on the other. And he made bars of setum wood, which he overlaid with gold, and he put them into the rings that were at the sides of the ark to carry it. I, I, I always found it somewhat fascinating. They're so particular about the rods and the rings, and don't mm -hmm. take the rods out. Right. That's, that's very interesting. Um, he made also the propitiatory, that is the oracle, of the purest gold, two cubits and a half in length and a cubit and a half in breadth. Two cherubims also of beaten gold, which he set on the two sides of the propitiatory. One cherub in the top of one side and the other cherub in the top of the other side. Two cherubims at the two ends of the propitiatory. Spreading their wings and covering the propitiatory and looking one towards the other and towards it. Okay, so he's made it according to the design that was shown to... Moses, and we repeat the description so that we have that sense of this is exactly the object that was the 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 locus of God speaking in the in the Holy of Holies. Yeah, yeah, this is like the sound system. Yes, yes, and that that was accurate in the movie, saying it was a radio for speaking to God. Well, sort of. I mean, it's the yeah. it's the it's the place at which you speak to God. So, or at least the, mm -hmm. the, the Lord speaks to his people and the, the priest attending in the Holy of Holies is there to speak to him. I, you know, I, 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 the, do we have records of the priest speaking to the, to the Lord in the Holy of Holies? Well, no one was allowed in there hmm. except for the priests. Just the high priest. So we I always wonder, how do they carry the tabernacle around and set it up, right? Somebody, had, they, they've got the poles and they're carrying the, this box around. Mm -hmm. At some point, it's going to be outside of the Holy of Holies, right? See, see, I'm <laughs> Sorry, right. Sorry, Al Capone's Al like Capone waking up says from a I'm right. <laughs> so some, I mean, occasionally well, people must have seen it because of, and, and certainly when they're wandering in the wilderness, they have to yes. move camp every so often. And so the Levites carry all of the equipment and they're, they're the only ones who are allowed to touch it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, from what I know, they, it was wrapped. Mm. If it was going to be transported, it had to be wrapped especially and the the only people that were allowed to transport it were the levites right which is a particular tribe of israel it's not a uh, one family it's actually an entire tribe of people that were called levites they didn't inherit any of the territorial uh uh inheritance of uh, of canaan because their inheritance was their priestly duties and so they they were entirely linked to the tabernacle service mm. yeah yeah so the, their role in the in the the commonwealth of israel was that important it and it all res revolved around the, the service in the tabernacle and later the temple but the <laughs> this wrist is going nuts today uh the the levites were uh were given that role. Uh, I suppose you could call them guardians of the ark. Mm. But not more than <laughs> <like> that. That. <laughs> that makes them sound sound much more, you know, Marvel than or which, yeah. whoever's making guardians of the guardians of the galaxy, guardians of the ark, right? Yeah, we yeah, got we yeah. got fat in the chat having fun here because the Old Testament describes Hello, these things in agonizing detail. Well, interestingly, particularly these things, right? Particularly mm -hmm. the furniture, the tabernacle, and the furniture, and particularly the ark, the rod, and the ring. Okay, I'll shut up. Yes, fat. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's, there, there it, I, I'm, I mean, I, I love these descriptions and medieval commentators, which we will in future episode take you through some of the meditations on what all of that specific description is there's a wonderful wonderful meditation by the third uh, the 12th century um victorine richard of saint victor on the mystical arc and exactly what why the the corners are the way they are and the rings and the rods and, and everything um richard is very important because bonaventure reads him and so a great deal of the high medieval mystical meditations come out of that description that i just read you so cubits and all right but right now we're just trying mm -hmm. to get you to the okay so we've got the ark it's 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 the place of the 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 the, the um 
oracle it's the presence it's the 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 thing that you would in the temp what is it in the temple yet it's not in the temple yet is it because there's no temple yet yeah no ah. no the temple comes okay the, the temple comes in the de, uh, after the davidic era solomon is responsible for constructing the physical temple but uh, pre prior to David, prior to King David, the, the Israelites only have the tabernacle uh, religion. They only have the tabernacle service. So it's all centered on the this the ark. Everything about Israelite religion and devotion to God centers on the ark. At that point, yeah, yeah. And yet, it's not. It's so it's containing things. It said it'll contain the testimony. So we we have that sense mm -hmm. that it contains. We were usually shown of having it has it holds the tablets. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else in it? Yes. <laughs> it has a little jar full of the manna that the Hebrews, the Israelites, were given in the wilderness to eat, mm. and it also a golden has jar, the of rod. course, right? A golden, of course, of course. <laughs> we love our gold, um, <laughs> and everything for God is gold. Uh, but uh, they have some manna, and uh, as a remembrance of the food that the Lord gave the Israelites during the wandering, and then there's the the rod, the flowering Aaron the flowering Aaron's rod. flowering rod, yeah, yeah, Aaron's rod. That um, proved he's chosen as priest, right? Yes, yes, okay. yes. So that's also in there. I'm not sure if I'm missing anything. I feel there, like I there is something. There's up. the fire or the, the um, the spirit, but then I may be I may be jumping uh, ahead yes. of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but in terms of the physical objects, the the artifacts that, that are placed inside it, I think that's the only three okay. that I can remember. And and yet, it's not it's not like a box where God is. It's the throne. So we have that. And yeah, he's not locked in there. He's not like, <laughs> like they have it locked him in a coffin. <laughs> because no, this is the Indiana Jones imagery, though. It's it makes it seem like God is locked in a box. Mm -hmm. That's the whole like spooky face melting scene yeah. where they're, you know, Indy's like, close your eyes, Marion, don't look at it. It's like God has been locked in this box, and if you look at the spooks that are flying out of it your face melts which basically it's like this is not it <laughs> he's not locked in a box the box has got these things in it to remind the priests and to remind the israelites of their time in the wandering their their entire experience as a commonwealth coming out of uh, egypt in the exodus and all of the things that happened and god taking care of us in the wilderness and everything like this god sits on it it's his mm -hmm. throne it's like literally the throne, the throne room of uh, of Israel, the theocracy of Israel. Yeah. Two and two angels facing. So we have this is this is one of, mm -hmm. I, I've I, I've never seen this mosaic, but it's it's actually incredibly famous because it's made in the Carolingian period by Theodore Favolion, who is famous mm -hmm. for trying to answer the Eastern um, Orthodox about images and and the Franks, Theodore particularly because he's he's the author of one of these very important treatises on images is they're worried mm -hmm. in, in, in the eighth or ninth century about the appropriateness of making images. And Theodolf has, when he, when he's worried about making images, what he has put in his, the apse of his church is an image of the Ark. Like, so there's like mm -hmm. double angels here because there's a cherubim shown on the Ark and then the angels flanking the Ark. So we've got, we've mm -hmm. got the, the sense of, God's presence is shown by flanking angels. Yep. Flanking angels. So, okay, right. Got that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, here, this is this. I like this. It's, it's showing you that the just as in that Haydock Bible in the 19th century, we got a lot of images of the tabernacle and the furniture and everything. This is a Mozarabic Bible from the 10th century in Spain. Another image of the tabernacle with the furniture um, and a hanging lamp and the ark there with its rods, right? So we're we're very mm -hmm. aware of this the whole time. And this is the one I wanted to get to. Here's David dancing. 
<laughs> so we wander in the desert and then the, the, we get the period of the judges and the ark is kept mm -hmm. well not in jerusalem it's somewhere else with with the the, the levites right i mean at, at most proximately it's kept mm -hmm. in the house of um oza right obedidum no it's in the house mm -hmm. of obedidum I'm, I'm confusing confusing my people um and it it at at this point david wants to he's conquered jerusalem and he wants to bring the ark into jerusalem where he's he's now king of jerusalem right he wants to bring the ark in mm -hmm. fat fat verifies the tablets the rod of aaron and the manna there there is also this idea of the fire right that's that's lost that um Margaret Barker points out uh, the um, is referenced as what what's happened. So we still have the ark, and David's going to bring it up mm -hmm. to Jerusalem. How's that go? No. <laughs> <laughs> this may be where they get Don't some of them. some of the idea <laughs> in the movie, right? It's like it's a little dangerous to to, to deal with this ark, right? A little. It's a little dangerous. <laughs> shall, shall i read this it bit be... yeah please read it i don't want to spoil it for okay everybody. this is this is second <laughs> kings which if you're reading those protestant bibles of samuel um chapter six uh, and david gathered together all the chosen men of israel thirty thousand big parade and david arose mm -hmm. and went with all the people that were with him of the men of judah to fetch the ark of god upon which the name of the lord of hosts is invoked who sitteth over it upon the cherubims. Again, it's very clear that he sits on it. Mm -hmm. And and I do I I think this is worth sort of like really, really emphasizing that the scriptures over and over, it's a chair. It's a portable chair. Yes. So it's not, yes. the point of it is not what you saw in Indiana Jones, where there's no presence over it as a as a throne, right? They think about it as a box with a container, but that's not what it is. Mm -hmm. And they laid the ark of God upon a new cart. They should have carried it with poles, but anyway, and took it out of the house of Abinadab, who was in Gaba. And Oza and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drove the new cart. And when they had taken it out of the house of Abinadab, who was in Gaba, Ahio, having care of the ark of God, went before the ark. But David and all Israel played before the Lord on all manner of instruments made of wood, on harps and lutes and timbrels and cornets and cymbals. And when they came to the floor of Nacon, Oza put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it because the oxen kicked and made it lean aside. And the indignation of the Lord was enkindled against Oza and he struck him for his rashness and he died there before the ark of God. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty stunning since he, what he was doing was worrying about whether it would fall off the cart. <laughs> so, so yes. Oza or Uza to steady the ark touches it. It is so, and this is the, the sort of sacredness yes. of the ark is, is underlined in the story. It's so sacred that he can't to touch it, to make sure it doesn't fall on the ground. He's struck down. And David was grieved because the Lord had struck Oza and the name of that place was called the striking of Oza to this day. And David was afraid of the Lord that day saying, how shall the ark of the Lord come to me? How remember that phrasing, how shall mm -hmm. the ark of the Lord come to me? And he would not have the ark of the Lord brought into himself into the city of David, but he caused it to be carried into the house of Obadiah the Gethite. And the ark of the Lord abode in the house of Obadiah and Gethite three months. But what happens to the... <laughs> and the Lord blessed Obadiah and all his household. And it was told King David yeah. that the Lord had blessed Obadiah and all that he had because of the ark of God. Mm -hmm. So David went and brought away the ark of God out of the house of Obadiah into the, house, the city of David with joy. And there were with David seven choirs and calves for victims. And when they had carried the ark of the God, the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a ram. And David danced with all his might before the Lord, and David was girded with the linen ephod. And David and all the house of Israel brought the ark of the covenant of the Lord with joyful shouting, with sound of trumpet. 
And when the ark of the Lord was come into the city of David, Michal, the daughter of Saul, looking out through a window, saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. Le okay, so we've got, these are really important details. Everybody listening? David says, how shall the ark of the Lord come to me? It stays mm -hmm. with, it stays in the house of Obadidim for three months. And um, they're leaping and dancing before the ark. Um, and she despised him in her heart. And they brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place in the midst of the tabernacle, which David had pitched for it. And David offered holocausts and peace offerings before the Lord. And when he had made an end of offering holocaust and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. There's more about what happens with Michael there, but... Hmm. Leaping. How should the ark of the Lord come to me? Three months. Yes. Okay. There, there's another longer description of this in Chronicles. Um, when he brings the ark in and they play before it, they sing before it. They're mm. all the singers and the joyful noise in the ark. And there's a, there's a psalm. There's a, a psalm that um, he sings. And they bring the ark into Jerusalem. In that day, David made Asaph the chief to give praise to the Lord with his brethren. Praise ye the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his doings among the nations. Sing to him, yea, sing praises to him and relate all his wondrous works. Praise ye his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek ye the Lord and his power. Seek ye his face evermore. Remember his wonderful works, which he hath done, his signs and the judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Israel, his servants, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Remember forever his covenant, the word, which he has commanded to a thousand generations, the covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac. And he appointed the same to Isaac for a precept and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying to thee, will I give the land of Canaan the lot of your inheritance, when they were but a small number, very few and sojourners in it. And they passed from nation to nation and from kingdom to another people. He suffered no man to do them wrong and reproved kings for their sake. Touch not my anointed, and do no evil to my prophets. Sing ye to the Lord all the earth, show forth from day to day his salvation. Declare his glory among the Gentiles, his wonders among the people. For the Lord is great, and exceedingly to be praised, and he is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Praise and magnificence are before him, strength and joy in his place. Bring ye to the Lord, O ye families of the nations, bring ye to the Lord glory and empire. Give to the Lord glory to his name, bring up sacrifice, and come ye in his sight, and adore the Lord in his in holy becomingness. Let all the earth be moved at his presence, for he has founded the world immovable. Let the heavens rejoice, and the earth be glad, and let them say among the nations, The Lord hath reigned. Let the sea roar in the fullness thereof, let the fields rejoice in all things that are in them. Then shall the trees of the wood give praise before the Lord, because he has come to judge the earth. Give ye glory to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And say ye, Save us, O God our Savior, and gather us together, and deliver us from the nations, that we may give glory to thy holy name, and may rejoice in singing thy praises. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from eternity to eternity. And let all the people say Amen, and a hymn to God. So he left there before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, Asaph and his brethren to minister in the presence of the Ark, continually day by day, and in their courses. That's um, Chronicles, or in the Latin Paralipomenum, chapter 16. Mm. It's very important, it seems. <laughs> well, there's a, there's a lot of great details in all of this about you know what happens when David... Yeah is in the presence of the ark and the, these 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 specifics hmm so the, this one here is in antwerp apparently we found it there it is <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I found the ark it's in antwerp <laughs> attentive watchers will recognize what an unlikely place will recognize <laughs> this one from our our opening credits right the ark mm -hmm. which we've apparently titled our Live stream again. 
It's the mosaic <laughs> ark is clearly Moses's ark, right? This is the ark that Moses is shown how to build on the mountain, and it's yeah. built by Bezaleel and covered in gold. And we know David brings it into Jerusalem, you know, in some danger, but it's brought there, and he sets it up in a tabernacle and sings a great psalm in praise of the Lord. Yes. Yeah, it's the focus point for David worshiping God. So what happens to it? Why, why would it's, 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 where'd it go? <laughs> where did it go? <laughs> well, that's an interesting story. I, 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 I don't I don't story. find details in 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 the in the it scripture just, here. It just kind of vanished. It just vanishes. <laughs> you think it was kind of important, mm -hmm. and they paid a lot of attention to. I mean, it's so dangerous that when Uzzah yes. touches it because it's about to fall off the cart, he dies. So you'd think there'd be some record yes. of what happened to it. Well, it's like losing, I mean, it's like someone going, whoops, we lost the nuke. Yes. <laughs> what do you mean you lost the nuke, man? <laughs> yeah, whoops, it's gone. <laughs> and it's, it's, that's it's, how, that's how big of a deal it is to lose the ark, for the ark to disappear from the scriptures. I mean, it's, it's like saying, whoops, we lost the nuke. Where'd it go? I don't know. <laughs> It's, it's the place of God and it's been, and, yeah. and significantly, I realize I just, I just, I need to read Josephus in detail. I've sort of mentioned that we, and I've, I've got my, I've got, I got a translation of it and I haven't studied it, but th the one thing that's not taken from the, the temple when the city is sacked in, in 70 AD is the Ark. It, it's, 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 it's yes. not there in 70. The Romans AD. don't the have Romans it. The Romans don't have it. No, they had they got the candle. I mean, it's in the Arch of Titus, right? They got the candelabra and some of the other furniture, um, but no ark. No, no. Well, the the scriptures do not record where it went, but at some point during the Solomonic era, the ark went missing. Hmm. Are doing the so, Solomonic era, so I mean, we we don't we actually. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's the descriptions <clears throat> with David, right? We have Solomon. The descriptions for Solomon are things of his throne. He has a big golden ivory throne made for himself, with lions on yes. the steps. I love that, right? The, the little lions on all the steps, which sounds like a pretty yes. pretty dramatic throne. Well, it's not as dramatic as the ark. <laughs> the cherubim facing the the you yes. know the the, the uh, propitiatory, which I've always found that a difficult word to translate. This like oracle, the the seat, the the place where you plead for plead before Lord. Mm -hmm. So there, there's a number of options, right? It could have been could have been taken when the Babylonians capture the city and they, Nebuchadnezzar carries off all this stuff. That's one theory. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's one theory. Um, it could have been taken when the Assyrians uh, invaded and basically took off the, the ten northern kingdoms, mm. but that's very unlikely. Okay. The, the story for, for the cops in Africa, as we've said before in a previous stream, is that it was during the meeting with the King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba when the Ark actually left Jerusalem mm. and uh, was taken down into Africa. So that's the that's the tradition that is kept by the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, that the Solomonic uh, meeting with the, the, the Queen of Sheba, the Sabaeans, right. uh, that ended up in, the, in a conversion and uh, sending a lot of Hebrews down into Africa with the Queen of Sheba to establish the religion there with the Ark. But it's an interesting thing because it's at the point of Solomon's reign where the, the Ark of the Covenant just dis disappears entirely from the from the scriptures. It's uh, it's not referenced again. Hmm. 
I, 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 I do know. Of, I, I think I do know of one reference. Oh wait, look. So this, yes. this I couldn't, I couldn't resist. It's like, what do those cherubim look like? Well, there's, there's a, a recently um, unearthed uh, one of these winged guardians, right? Think about guardians mm -hmm. that I have, I have in. Uh, yes. On the one hand, we said that they're using Egyptian technology and they have like Egyptian imagery. But I've always I've always enjoyed yeah. these these temple guards, the big giant winged beasties that you get in Assyria. Yes. So I'm, it, you know, it's oh like yes, somehow winged beasties, human faces <laughs> guard the ark, right? Okay, <laughs> that that is a possibility. But maybe yes. it's still to be found buried somewhere, set in wood, gold, possibly maybe i don't know but 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 we do have yes. oh look i found i found it i think i found it here's here's a dragon and an ark and a woman and a child you found the ark it. is mentioned in scripture again oh do you, can here oh, <gasps> look at this one here's another one it's got it's it's there's a te there's a temple with the doors open although it's in in this drawing uh -huh. uh, which i believe is german from the 14th century um mm -hmm. is uh, it's just an archway, as it were. It's like the doors are open, and there's a gold box, right? And in 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 the foreground mm -hmm. of the picture, there's a woman who's clothed with. Uh, I think I I think it's meant to be the sun, right? And there's a moon at her feet. That's very clearly there's a moon at her feet, and she's got a crown of twelve stars, and she's holding a child, and is threatened by a dragon. Aha, uh -huh. that brings us to the apocalypse. A, a, ooh, a revelation. A revelation. <laughs> so we have we have this knowledge that the ark vanishes, as far as anybody knows. There's no mention of it, and we ha we do have throne visions in Isaiah and Ezekiel, and it, there's some interesting visions in Daniel, who's in the Babylonian court. So maybe images it, but the 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 ark itself disappears so it's very interesting that we have it here in the very last book of the bible it's been in the number two right yes, exodus and now is. here it is in the last one the revelation let's see the the proper title of this book is the revelation of jesus christ which god gave unto him to make known to his servants the things which must shortly come to pass and signified sending by his angel to his servant john who hath given testimony to the word of god and the testimony of jesus christ what things soever he hath seen and i think in this image here we have john seated there he's got talking hands so he's he's the one who's having this vision right and he's seen this mm. um and this is what he sees so the seventh angel sounded the trumpet, their great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdom of this world has become our Lord's and his Christ's, and he shall reign forever and ever. Amen. Oh, this is chapter 11. Sorry. We had a little discussion in the telegram today about who gave these numbers to the books. It was Stephen Langton, who is the Archbishop of Canterbury, who opposes King John and therefore directly the reason for the degradation of the English monarchy. Just so you know. All right. Um, <laughs> he'd studied in Paris. What can you say? Okay. And the four and 20 ancients who sit on their seats in Paris. the sight of God fell on their faces and adored God saying, we give thee thanks. O Lord, all my Lord, God almighty who art and who wast and who art to come because thou hast taken to thee great, thy great power and thou hast reigned. Okay. So it seems like it's a th kind of a throne room scene. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come in the time of the dead, and they should be judged, and that thou shouldst render reward to thy servants, the prophets and the saints, and to them that fear thy name, little and great, and shouldst destroy them who have corrupted the earth. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and the ark of his testament was seen in his temple, and there were lightnings and voices and an earthquake, and great hail and a great sign appeared in heaven a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet 
and on her head a tra- crown of 12 stars. Ooh, just like in the picture. Okay. And being with mm-hmm. child, she cried travailing in birth and was in pain to be delivered. And there was seen another sign in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his head seven diadems. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to be delivered, that when she should be delivered, he might devour her son. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with an iron rod. And her son was taken up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God that they should feed her a thousand two hundred and sixty days. And there was a great battle in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels. Hmm. Okay, so it's included the temple of op- the, the temple of God's open in heaven and the ark is seen in his temple and a great sign appeared in heaven. So all of these things seem to be happening in the same place. Temples opened in heaven, ark is seen in his temple, mm-hmm. and a great sign appeared in heaven. Okay. Mm-hmm. It, it seems to be the same scene, right? Stephen Langton stuck a number in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> between 11 and 12 right so we always say the numbers the numbers <laughs> beware the tricksy scholastics That's for sure. uh, the monks knew better at least certainly the monks who drew the pictures here and put mm. the, the ark is seen in the heavens and the the woman clothed with the sun mm-hmm. is seen in the heaven with her child being threatened by the dragon. So all this happens in heaven. So it's a, it's a, it's a vision of reality. Hmm. That's good. So we've, uh, it, it's, it, it's an interesting thing that's happening here because only Israelites really would be familiar with the imagery of that vision at that time that John is receiving the revelation. It's so specific to the Israelite religion. Uh, It's very, very specific and very particular. And it's almost like a John receiving the explanation for their their entire <laughs> their entire history as a people, isn't it? I mean, it's like uh, here is the the ultimate revelation of Christ. Right. Here we have the vision of the woman being uh, being pursued by the dragon in in heaven therefore... in the temple. Yes. With the imagery specific to Israel. Right. Mm. It's very interesting. And and in, in certain respects, imagery that no one, based on the scriptures that we have, theoretically was even mm-hmm. talking about. It's like, it, 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 this, mm-hmm. this has fascinated me for a long time. And I do, I need to read Josephus's antiquities and, and be more, they're very focused on the temple, always. Mm. They build it, but it's like when when they come back from Babylon, the Judeans, the elite of the of the peoples who had been taken to to Babylon, um, they mm-hmm. Ezra has all the copies of the scriptures rewritten. And we, I can't now. I'm, I'm teaching multiple classes right now. One of them is on the the, the Euro Seven. We did the Council of Trent today. Um, the other one's on how to read the Gospels, and we've been looking at the Codex Samuetinus. And the other very famous image, there's several famous images in the Codex Samuetinus. One's that tabernacle image we showed you. Um, another is Ezra mm-hmm. before his, like, box of books, right? So there's a kind of ark of books. Ark means box, right? It's treasure box. So the arca, mm-hmm. it's in the, in the, the it, it means a treasure box. And he's, Ezra is shown there writing out all of the scriptures, so this is something of a miracle because they'd lost them. So he has to write them all down, <laughs> which then, then mm-hmm. the places all of the scriptures post Babylon. Interestingly, right? 
Old Testament scholars need to like ignore that little tidbit sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and therefore they have, he's had to rewrite all the, you know, the descriptions of the Ark and things like that, but they don't make another one. They've got the description. They don't seem to have made another one. Which is interesting. But then thinking about what was inside it, they would not have had what was inside the the uh, the first ark. All of the all of the things that all of the treasures had been carried out of the temple when the Babylonians trashed Judea. Mm. So all of those vessels and things that were taken into Babylon. And I'm just thinking, if you're going to recreate the ark, you could theoretically make another ark. But do, do you have the the golden bowl of manna mm. and the Aaron's flowering rod and everything to put inside it? Where are the tablets? You know what I mean? There's things that are inside the ark that have... It's not just the ark that's missing. Mm. This It's the things inside it. I, I'm I'm still puzzled that they don't make another one because it seems like the the mm -hmm. the 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 the, the, pre the presence of God is huge, right? How do you how do you have a temple worship without the presence of God? That makes no sense. No, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. It's a big it's a big issue. It's a big problem to to think about what happened when they did uh, build the second temple uh, after exile mm. and uh, re, uh, I don't know if you'd call it rebooting, but uh, basically rebooting the, the sacrificial system of the religion right. to be able to do that with the Le Levitical priesthood. I mean, uh, not to get off on a tangent, but they'd had a they'd had a catastrophic ethnic cleansing already after this has gone on. Right. So we had a pre previously unified kingdom that split into two different kingdoms: the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah, with Benjamin, the tribe of Benjamin, aligned with Judah. The Israelites were there, therefore split. Israel was the northern kingdom; it wasn't the southern kingdom of Judah, and. The Israelites were completely displaced by the Assyrians and ca carried off into Assyrian captivity. They no longer lived on their uh, ancestral lands. That's why the Israelites are scattered. They're missing. They're no, no, no longer present in the uh, reconstruction efforts of the Judean exiles that returned from Babylon. Lost sheep, as it were. So, lost sheep, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, they're very, very wicked. Israel was very wicked. God was very patient with us before he did, the, <laughs> did that uh, <laughs> via Assyrian uh, mm. hand. But um, basically what what this means is that it's it's not the full nation of people that are reconstructing the temple and they're not reconstructing the religion with the original uh, instruments that were inside the tabernacle of mm. Moses. So there's been an interruption and there's been a population um, catastrophe, uh, which means even the Levitical priesthood has had some interruption because, uh, the, you know, it's like only to emphasize this, I couldn't emphasize it enough. Only Levites were able to do the services in the temple, only Levites, no mm. one else. So, you know, you have to find all your your Levites, then they have to start a temple service that they haven't been doing for how many years while they were in Babylon. It's a very complicated thing. Uh, how do you practice a religion that you haven't practiced in? Uh, it would have been 80 mm -hmm. years, you know. And the, the 80 years is three generations four if you're ancient enough to be having children at the right time so that's four generations of people without the temple service as the as they knew it it's it's interesting they've gone in they've had to reboot the religion but they but they don't bring back the ark right this is the no. the you know, it's like the, the they've got they bring back the sacrifices because we we have some sense that they're doing the sacrifices and, and as i understand mm -hmm. the the herodian temple is a third temple right Call it second temple, but what? No, second. Because, well, no, because Herod, you have the, Herod the, the great, the Herod the Great's temple, the one that the 
wall, the piece of the wall that is left from is a, mm -hmm. another building yet again. Another construction yeah. after the... Okay. I think. Because Her Herod, you know, the Herodians are very interested in displaying their magnificence as basically Hellenistic kings. And so the, mm -hmm. the temple that Jesus knew was again another construction, and it was a very yeah. And they have so none of them were the Solomonic temple, but they're also, I mean, they're not the tabernacle anymore. Um, and no. they're they're also the incomplete with the presence. You could say the it's 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 tricky because what we have in the intertestamental period right the period between the old testament and the new testament is nothing yeah. or we have interestingly lots of egyptian texts right like ecclesiasticus or sirach and wisdom um and and mm -hmm. and and texts that are written from outside of jerusalem talking about what it would be like to get wisdom back right to get that presence back yes. to get that sense of um, you know, being in the delight of the Lord, like David was dancing before the ark. Yes. Yes. Well, the, <laughs> I mean, we can talk about cultural decline. <laughs> well, there's I that. To laugh. Yes. <laughs> it was, it, it, was, it, it, I mean, uh, no, but to talk about getting wisdom back, I mean, it's an interesting thing that you're saying this, what it would be like to get wisdom back and to be restored. I mean, that that kind of meditation, that's what was happening. <laughs> Jerusalem was plunged into cultural decline because they'd lost this, uh, they'd lost this service. They didn't have the ark, they didn't have the, the uh, they didn't even have the same temple. That David was praying. Right. Uh, that David was intending on praying to. The same, the same, the same ark that David was dancing in front of. They didn't even have it in the Herod Herodian period. I mean, it's it's stunning. But we can, we have proof. To, to we have proof in Revelation that they remember that it existed. I mean, and and they're obviously yes. they're reading the, the 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 Torah. They're reading the Exodus. They're reading that there was such a yeah. thing as the ark. Yes, yes, and 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 John in his revelation has it sense that like the 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 heavens are open and the the climax of this longing and waiting comes when the ark is seen again. Yes, M must have been kind of powerful. Mm -hmm. That longing. Yes, very much so. For the presence of the Lord, mm. which they don't have from their own description. I mean, it's like it's, we think about the temple is where you go to make sacrifices to the Lord, but they don't have from their own history and and the records yes. in Exodus, which we read. It's like you no, know, it's like what it must have been like to read that over and over and over again and know that you don't have that ark. <laughs> Painful. Painful. I found it. So here's the Coptic one of the oldest images of the ark and we know that it's she is the ark one because she's slain by angels <laughs> <laughs> and this is i mean it's like the, I, the, the the sort of if you were doing this in meme world it would be so obvious because everybody's like oh yeah they're the angels therefore we have the presence, therefore yeah. we have the enthronement, therefore we have, maybe maybe this Coptic one is, is it's got pillars and here, I got another one. Oh, this one's in Egypt, one of my favorites, right? She's not flanked by angels, but she's sitting there, right? Maybe we'll go back to the Coptic one with angels because we have in the Abawit one, we have our Lord enthroned on the cherubim chariot, mm -hmm. right? He, here she is yes. enthroned and we know who she is because... The gospel tells us who she is. Um, first, the angel comes to Mary and says, 
um, that uh, you shall conceive and bear a son, and he shall call him named Jesus. He shall be called great and should be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, of David his father, and he shall reign in the house of Jacob forever, and his of his kingdom there shall be no end. And Mary says, How shall this be done? Because I know not man. And the angel answering said to her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the Most High shall overshadow thee. And therefore also the holy which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. The overshadowing and the the, the, the sense of the cloud of the Spirit is very, very powerful yes. in that imagery. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she also hath conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her that is called barren, because no word shall be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me, done to me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And, and you know, and then like, that's the good bit of the story, right? Now we've had the, the conception and the incarnation. We can stop now, right? <laughs> no. Oh, you want me to keep going? All right. You skip some parts. <laughs> Skipping parts. Let me let me get a, another picture of the. Skipping oh no no! I'll, 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 I'll stick I'll doing? stick with the, the the lady enthroned in the Coptic um, uh, tapestry. And Mary, rising up in those days, went into the hill country with haste, into a city of Judah. Mary, making sure that you're going into Judah, up into the hills, right? And she entered into mm -hmm. the house of Zachary and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she cried out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed art thou that thou hast believed, because those things shall be accomplished that were spoken to thee by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, because he hath regarded the humility of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Because he that is mighty hath done great things to me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is from generation unto generations to them that fear him. He hath showed might in his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the conceit of their heart. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath received Israel his servant, being mindful of his mercy." And as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. And Mary abode with her about three months, and she returned to her own house. That's a curious, that that's a curious little scene. Yeah. <laughs> she leaves before Elizabeth's baby is born, so some friend A, right? If the entire point was, oh, your cousin is also pregnant, you should go help her while she gives birth. She's six months ahead of you, so you got plenty of time. Not apparently the point of the story. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I do have ideas. Like we're doing the visitation right now, and it's like I said that this picture was important, right? The, the, um, yes. the meeting, which has has yes. all sorts of lovely sort of layers of, oh, the two pregnant women are meeting. Isn't it delightful? And, oh, of course, the baby leaped in, in Elizabeth's womb because that's what babies do. They do. But I'm not sure that's the point of it mm. either. <laughs> I lost my place. The leaping. The leaping. Why would John leap? The leaping. The leaping. He leaps. <laughs> he leaps. John is leaping. Why does he leap? They're in the hill country in Judea, and he leaps before the mother of the Lord. And mm -hmm. let me just go back to this. Oh, no, I died. Okay, I very carefully marked my places and then lost them. So everybody think about what we're reading. <laughs> I find my place back in, in Two Kings. Uh, 
Um, what did I say? What chapter it was? <laughs> oh, there. <laughs> Six. Um, yeah. I don't pay attention to the numbers. Oh, good. Yes. I don't want to, you're, you're, I don't you're want to destroy any monarchies. Pre 13th century. No Magna Carta for you. Yes, I should say that. <laughs> Stephen Langton is the archbishop who has the Magna Carta written against John because John has been opposing Stephen Langton's appointment as Archbishop of Canterbury. And so Langton just has to you know, like destroy the kingdom over it and then number the, number the chapters. <laughs> just to rub it and, in <laughs> and, and, and make it seem as if chapter 11 in Revelation is different from chapter 12 when they're the same scene mm. right okay likewise mm. when David was afraid of the Lord saying how shall the ark of the Lord come to me what was it what, what, was, what was it that Elizabeth said and whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me Mm. And the baby leaps. And the Mary sings a long song. Wait. Mm -hmm. So Scott Hahn actually does this very nicely in his Hail Holy Queen. So if you doubt me, go read Scott Hahn. And he goes through how, why should Luke put this story in? It's all, all of these things. It's like, you know, my, the bet noir of my life. Not the dragon that you know the bet noir the, the 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 black beast right that that red dragon that comes after the lady no i know how to deal with that one the bet noir of my life is everyone saying oh there's so little in the gospels about mary and it's like stop asking the question that way it's why mm -hmm. is there anything about her in the gospels at all yeah right you don't yes. need stories of the mom Unless something very, mm -hmm. very significant is happening in trying to show her in her overshadowing by the Holy Spirit. And then this little scene mm -hmm. where she goes up into the hills and the mother of and, and Elizabeth saying, why should the mother of my Lord come to me? And the baby leaps and Mary sings a very elaborate psalm about the Lord and all of the things that he's done from generation to generation in, in caring for his people. Mel is saying, Alleluia, Alleluia, O Dolce Virgo Maria. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. It's it's clear. The reason for the visitation, the reason for the story of the visitation is Mary's the Ark. Got it? <laughs> and if you've been yes. wondering all these, you know, all these episodes, we're in episode whatever we are, 60, 67, 66, 67. Why our live stream is called the Mosaic Ark? It's because it's Mary. We named we yes. named our 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 traveling around the internet. In fact, after Our Lady, because she is the one who mm -hmm. bears. And I'll go now through the all of these early images of Christ. If you, it's like we're so fixed on the crucifixion as the main image of of, of Christianity that we are missing the actual context, like the the figure and ground. The the crucifixion is the the yeah. moment in the incarnation and the entering into the three-dimensional like reality of the world but the apps images theodore favolion puts a puts a a um arc on his apps because he's nervous mm -hmm. about these images right but the the early apps is showing the majesty are much more it's like throughout throughout the the um ancient christian world from bawit in egypt right here christ is shown enthroned on the Four living creatures of Ezekiel's vision, which is the chariot throne, right? So he's enthroned on the 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 cherubim, and in the incarnational vision, he's enthroned in Mary's lap, flanked by the the apostles, right? But in that same yeah. Bible, that same Bible that had that map of the tabernacle that we showed you at the very beginning, where where it's showing the the Holy of Holies and the tent around it, which we're pretty sure is used to model all of those later images of what the tabernacle looks like in the wilderness. That same book has this image facing the beginning of the gospels, which is Christ in majesty, surrounded by a rainbow in heaven, clearly, because he's blue and he's got sparkly stars around him and such with two gold angels on either side of him. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it's arc imagery. It's all arc imagery. It's constantly yeah, arc it. imagery. And that, you know, Indiana Jones goes looking for the lost arc. Well, he was digging in the wrong place. 
<laughs> he was gold digging in the wrong place, wasn't he? <laughs> Very much gold digging in the wrong place. If you want to speak to God, go to mass. Right. Yeah. 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 It's amazing. <laughs> it's so simple once you say it out loud, right? So here it is in the 8th century yeah. in the Codex Amitinus, Christ enthroned between the cherubim. And, and realizing that the, the ancient Christians go back to Egypt. Here we go. Bawit, Egypt, Apps, Mose uh, Apps Fresco, right? Painted. Christ enthroned mm -hmm. in heaven. He is shown to the world through the incarnation. And therefore, the presence is with us. This is this is the the great mm -hmm. revelation of Christianity is Mary is the ark on which the Lord is enthroned. So all of this overshadowing mm -hmm. and such that plays like this, she's in the story because she's the ark through whom the presence speaks to us, right? The word. Um and 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 there is there's a so origin origin of Alexandria, Alexandria, Egypt, um writes the earliest commentary on John, the gospel of John. And he's very clear about how mm -hmm. to, to, to see Christ, you have to have taken Mary as your mother because this, this little image at the beginning of, of the commentary was talking about how John was the one in the revelation, right? John, John is the one who leans on Christ's breast at the, at the last supper. He's the one who stands under the cross, sees Christ and takes Mary as his mother, that Origen says, to, to, to understand Christ, you need to have taken Mary as your mother, to see her as the one through whom he's revealed. And the, the early um, artists know this, right? So they're constantly showing Christ in majesty flanked by angels. This is an image from Rupert of Deutz's commentary on the Song of Songs. We have Mary in, on a throne. It's always going to be flanked by angels. Um, Here's another great mm -hmm. um, fresco mosaic with Christ in majesty, angels above him. All churches are showing you this over and over and over again. The, 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 the ark opens and you see heaven. The temple doors of the temple open. You see heaven. The ark's there mm -hmm. and the ark is showing you Christ. Yes. Yes. This iconography is really important for our church. Right. We always have the mother of god as the throne where christ is sitting uh because we know that that's uh i mean it, it's a it's just this image is everywhere in these in in these churches uh it's it's a, it's not uh often in gold it's not possible <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, it's it's not possible to walk inside one of our churches and not see this image because we know that that's what we're doing when we're going inside. Uh, we're entering the church. We see the icon of Mary, uh, Saint Mary the Virgin, as a as the throne of mm -hmm. Christ, and then we're facing the altar with the icon of Christ inside this uh, this place, and very often. She's there, uh, even at the uh, even at the altar. So we're 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 facing uh, in in a sense the same way the Israelites were facing the ark to speak to God. We're facing her in order to speak to her son, mm -hmm. and this is something which is mistaken for a kind of idol worship by a lot of people that have not seen this form of their religion before. Right. It's very commonly mistaken as an idolatry. And it's one of the one of the things which is repeated very frequently, very frequently by people when they see this, and they say, "Why are you praying to a woman? Why are you praying to a human being? Why are you praying to to Mary?" Uh, as though we were uh, doing something which was not in every way essentially biblical, in every way uh, doing the same thing that the Israelites did when uh, when the priesthood face the ark to speak to god exactly yeah. she's the ark yep and so all of it and yep. and this i'm i'm still working on i'm still working on this article it's like these things when you had to like put together all the pieces of the mosaic very 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 carefully so that you really really show yeah. what's going on here and i 
I yes. now come up with this I think wonderful reading of what's going on in our in Notre Dame in Paris, right, with the rose windows yeah. and the and the print. All of these up through the 13th century, the, the the images of Mary are always holding the child. She's enthroned, and she's the throne, and she shows us Christ. So he sits on her as, mm -hmm. you know, the Lord in His presence sat on the cherubim, in the the ark. So she's the ark. But you pray before her because you're praying in the presence of Christ. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, it's a, it, it's a common it's a common icon that people will see the Virgin and Child. I, I've even heard someone describing uh, before why why is he depicted as a baby when he grew up? Mm. You know, it's this it's, it's mm. not understanding why the why the the icons have been written the way that they've been written. It's to show specifically that without her, he could not have been seated in the first place. This is the this is the point also of your of, of your work, is to show. I mean, a baby can't, <laughs> God can't just enter into our universe as a baby without having a mother to carry him. You know, yeah, the babies need. <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh, but it's quite funny. <laughs> what was Christ going to do, like, without his mother? He can't just grow himself up. He wasn't just going to become a man and not have a mother to take care of him. And it's just bizarre to think about, you know, what you said uh, just earlier, that Mary could have been taken out of the scriptures completely in the sense of the New, the New Testament didn't have to mention her. If, if it's, it's mainly it's, about him as a, you know. It could have been Jesus Christ superstar. Yes, they will get, they off, get the off the bus. <laughs> right. <laughs> they just get off the bus. Yeah. <laughs> None of this had to be mentioned. He could have just been walking. What It could have been like scene cut. You know, Old Testament, New Testament. What are we doing? Oh, we're walking around a market in Jerusalem. It could have been right. that without any of this reference to uh, to the Virgin. She's been specifically mentioned in the Gospels because without her, none of it could have happened. <laughs> well, and you need, you none, need the Ark for the presence. And so Luke is clearly describing the Ark. Yes. And John describes the Ark in, yes. the, 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 in Revelation, yes. the, the doors of the temple open, the Ark is seen, the woman is seen, and... I mean, and then it, it's it's interesting the the um the sort of efforts that some commentators go to to say no well, that's not Mary because it's the church and I'm like okay she's giving birth to the child who's going to rule with a rod of iron <laughs> which is literally what it says in Psalm two about the you know the the the, the king so he is mm -hmm. she's given birth to. And, and in sorrow, right? It's like, oh, well, she didn't have birth pangs. It's like, A, nobody says that in the scriptures, that Mary had no birth pangs. Mm -hmm. That's a, a tradition. And Simeon says quite clearly, and a sword shall pass through your own heart too. So mm -hmm. sorrow, right? So in whatever, you know, sorrow that she's had in, in, in giving birth, that is in the vision, clearly, the way in which the, 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 the Lord becomes present. Um, yeah. The thing is, I now there will be a stumbling block here, which goes back to why the felt stories in the Sunday school are not doing their job. <laughs> and 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 this is so to say that people are clearly Indiana Jones and the Lost, the the Raiders of the Lost Ark. I you know I enjoyed that movie a lot. Watched many many times back in the eighties when I liked the John Williams music. So you know, um, got a lot of it memorized, and. The movies do as well as they do because people are longing for spiritual reality, obviously. Yes. Um, you know, the the, the yes. radio for speaking to God or the melty faces or the, the I mean, just the to go back to the, the movie image, to slide through the pictures of the church and the altarpiece and, and, and Krakow mm -hmm. and back to the Ark, right? That Lucas um, in the series is obviously tapping into something that people do have a longing for which is i mean stories of not just the looting and the gold and the if, if it's just treasure 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 um stories like gold you know gym heists or art heists or something mm -hmm. like that there is a genre for that but 
what Indiana Jones is doing is not just tricking Nazis, but tricking Nazis out of occult power. Right? He's, he's, he's tricking yes. and or in the the one in India getting back the the stones, the glowy stones, right? Something of we want the presence of the Lord. There, there's mm. there's got to be there. Well, it's interesting that the Nazis are the ones in that film that are trying to find the Ark. <laughs> I mean, it's it's the whole reason Germans became Nazis in the first place is they lost the Ark. You know, it's like uh, they lost their connection to the 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 ancient Catholic. Uh, religion the, the well German now we'll go back to white stoves i mean some of them did right yeah the, 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 but the, 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 the I mean, still catholics in germany <laughs> no no but i mean in terms of as a whole i mean G germany's like fractured into this like uh you know warring sort of people of uh of having uh you know the protestant thing and you mm. know then they go off into the like m maxing out on the occult stuff uh, which is what Nazism was. So uh, I, I don't know. It's just, it's an interesting thing that he's like <laughs> he's trying to prevent them from getting it when uh, everybody wants it. Yeah. Everybody wants the Ark as a weapon. Everyone wants the Ark as power. And, and what the uh, what the Ark is and who the who the Ark truly is is uh, <laughs> is the the uh, is it's like the power of civilization that everybody's forgotten mm. the uh well so the buried treasure th that i was so this is this is this we have a replica of this altarpiece in chicago at saint john cantius but this is the the big one mm. in krakow white stoses magnificent um it's a um assumption of the virgin and her coronation right so there is the the ark is taken up back up into heaven, right? Um, that there's this longing for that sense of what would it be like to be in that presence. And mm. I mean, certainly the, you know, I grew up Presbyterian. I know what the, the absence feels like, right? You, you have that sense that there should be, I mean, even the presence in the mass, not there because we did communion with the grape juice and the cubes of bread, right? <laughs> that, there's a there's a this hunger this longing which is very like i think in the in you say the the period in in jesus you know right before the incarnation it's like we don't have the ark we don't yes. know where it is we don't know what the presence of god is and then you have this entry of the lord into our history our physically in that the incarnation yes. is like the fulfillment of the greatest longing of humanity ever and that i was like i was thinking about the the, the sense of the longing it's like the presence as a cloud or the fire on the mm. mountain or you know some other it's like no god became present how is he going to do it and we've explored that a little bit in draco chemicus with he came out of a cloud of pigeons right which works in the fantasy setting <laughs> but if you're going to say <laughs> he he actually becomes human that entry that entry of god into into his own creation comes in this you know you love this image of conception as that little like burst of light into the world mm -hmm. baby is going to be this whole new person and christ mm -hmm. enters into our life with us in that way I, I, it's hard for me to understand why everyone's not christian and and just rejoicing in that moment because it's so beautiful mm. <laughs> saying god yeah. comes into the world with us and then of course to say well but so the 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 vessel through which he came into the world it wasn't a box no <laughs> <laughs> gold box it with septum wood right it's like no it was this beautiful young woman who gave birth yeah. to him and you're going to celebrate her and sing about her and and, and make praises to her yeah. in the same way you praise the glory of the Lord for showing him forth to mm -hmm. us. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
I mean, it's funny because most people will understand how, you know, uh, young men are when they're like, don't talk about my mama like that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, it's just this very strange thing that the culture sort of said, oh, well, she doesn't matter or, you know, the statement that mm. she's just a vessel, like she's just a box. But, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's very strange kind of thinking. But... Um, I mean, nobody uh, from from a lot of cultures, if you would even say that about your own mother who isn't the Ark of the mm. Covenant, people would be completely scandalised and fights would break out. <laughs> so she's she's the very reason for why the Lord is with us in flesh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a it's a wonderful thing to meditate on it. The the longing of the Israelites to have the presence of God again. Um it's a very it's a very kind of uh painful and uh difficult thing to describe what it would be like to think about that point in time when there was no incarnation yet and the mm. entire nation that were supposed to have been taken out to be directly in relationship with God, to be chosen people, had lost their connection to their own God because of this, uh, the absence of his throne amongst the people. Um, I mean, it's probably like uh, the only thing you could compare it to, which would even be a terrible comparison, is like a nation of people that have lost their king. You know, that, but that's but that's exactly right. what it is. It's a nation of people that have lost their king. Uh, and uh, because of Mariam, we have our king. We have him in flesh. It's just it, it, it's it's a magnificent thing to meditate on and it's the reason why we have the icons that we do of, of of the virgin as throne because we think about it every time we go into the liturgy um we greet we greet the mother of god every time we go into the liturgy before before the the service begins during the service uh yeah every, everything revolves around her because without her there is no presence yeah. And it's nice that you're making mentioning the hymn, and it's nice that I actually had it here because I was thinking about it this morning when yeah. I was writing. So, Quim Terra Pontus Ithara, which is the hymn that we say or sing um, every morning at Matins and Lauds for the Office of the Virgin, um, mm -hmm. allegedly composed by Venetius Fortunatus. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that we're not quite sure. I, I, I get confused about this because sometimes people are certain and sometimes they're not. But anyway, it's a very ancient hymn. And it specifically describes Mary as Ark, right? Um, mm. This is uh, a, a 19th century translation by J.M. Neal, but I will give you the Latin when it matters, right? This is the translation. The, the God whom earth and sea and sky adore and laud and magnify, who o'er their threefold fabric reigns, the virgin's spotless womb contains. The God whose will by moon and sun and all things in due course is done, is born upon a maiden's breast by fullest heavenly grace possessed. How blessed that mother in whose shrine, the great artificer divine, whose hand contains the earth and sky, vouchsafed as in his ark to lie. Blessed in the me message Gabriel brought, blessed by the work the spirit wrought, from whom the great desire of earth took human flesh and human birth. All honor, laud, and glory be, O Jesu, virgin born to thee, with whom whom with the Father we adore, and Holy Ghost forevermore. Amen. Um, it, it, it rhymes. That's good. Um, it, it rhymes and, and scans in Latin, too. And this, is, this is, it's the third stanza. Beater mater munere, cuia supernus artifex, mundum pugilo continens, ventris sub arca, clausus est. So, mm -hmm. it, it enclosed in the womb, and uh, under the womb, in the womb, the ark of the womb, arca, Yes. She is the ark. Yes. 
Yeah. We found it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's it yeah. is it is continuously yeah. fascinating how I just say, um resistant people are to that mystery since it's throughout Christianity. I mean, that's a sixth century hymn, mm. or it's at least certainly seventh, eighth century. It's a very ancient hymn. We have mm. the Bawit images. We have the, I mean, we have Luke, right? And all of this, this recognizing of her is like Elizabeth saying to her, why should the ark come to me? Why should the mother of my Lord come to me? Mm. The mother of the Lord is his ark. Her baby leaps in his womb as David danced before the ark. You know, Mary is, in, is, is then, you know, magnifies the Lord with her great canticle and that what Luke is doing. And if you don't, I mean, if you don't accept Luke as scripture, we just can't help you. <laughs> <laughs> That's pushing it. I know. It's like, well, where we take that one of the four gospels. I think we've just, <laughs> where in scripture does it say it? And it's like, all right, yeah. we may, you know, contested re reading of revelation because Stephen Langton stuck that number 12 in there, but it's in Luke that she is the the bearer of the lord yes yes with all of the imagery and that 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 carried with it in expecting the lord who was the lord and who would he be right. the one who sits enthroned on the cherubim mm -hmm. yes the uh The, the the presence of God with his people. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Yep. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Yeah. So it's a it's it's a it makes sense why everybody wants the ark and why everybody's digging for it. <laughs> and why without the ark there isn't really going to be peace for any people. Right. Because they won't have the presence. We need our savior. Mm hmm Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. So the the you have your tradition and I have my tradition approach. It only works if you don't actually believe that God became a man. It doesn't act it 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 only works if you don't actually believe that the ancient Israelites were uh solely responsible for carrying the the weight of the the burden of having that that ark in the first mm. place you know that was that was a unique uh, a unique burden that they were carrying at that time to have the type uh that's fulfilled in in the virgin and her son but uh without this uh you have to eliminate all of this to have an equality of tradition. You, ha you have to you have to forget about having the incarnation for everyone to just ignore that there, there's a distinction of religious traditions. Mm. And in order to say to everybody, well, you have your tradition and I have mine. Oh, we should we should uh, we should do that in the next one or, you know, to, yes, like, to, yes. <laughs> this the, yes. the, the, the point of this what, episode once, was simply to define the arc. And, yes. and but with 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 the ark mm. with the ark we have this we we still have this connection to the ancient Israelite yes religion there is no there is no artificial distinction between what was happening in old testament and what's happening in new testament right. and what christians are doing now and what they were doing in the old testament times the israelites there is no distinction there's perfect continuity between the old testament and the new testament because of the virgin. Yes. Yes. But the, yeah. the, 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 what I, I try to focus on when I write about this is the thing. So she's the place of the presence. And that's what it says in the yes. liturgy, what it says in the hymn that I just read yes. for you, what it shows in the art throughout the middle ages. And, and this, this, this puzzling, I mean, I've been teaching the reformation and, and the counter reform, well, counter -reform, it's like Luther and Trent this week the puzzling mm -hmm. place of why they why the reformation ends up you know 
destroying that element of the tradition, I don't understand yet. I've still mm -hmm. not, we're, we're a little bit playing with that in Draco Chemicus mm -hmm. with the Elizabethan, yeah. but it's, it's a very bizarre thing to, to recognize that somehow one Mary is lost as the Ark and she's turned into a sort of ordinary person. Um, and, mm -hmm. and so that modern, mm -hmm. modern devotions to her tend what well, one, they focus on the, the apparitions, which I think is a different kind of phenomenon. And we could talk about that another episode. Um, but modern devotion to Mary tends to focus her on her much more as a character in the story, like Peter or something, right? The, the, the sort of mm. model yourself on these, these one, these, um, Not not well saints because you do model yourself in the saints, but the but the, the I'm not denying him, <laughs> Rooster. <laughs> right? That that she is she becomes simply a historical figure herself, and the oh, and, yes, and the problem yes. of course is in yes. in the gospels, she's a framing figure that for some reason needed to be there for the story to fit in the the sort of mystery that the gospels are trying to show which is and the i won't i won't flip around in the right. pictures in the codex amiotinus image of christ enthroned with the cherubim it's he's framed by the evangelists right the evangelists are also part of this revelation of the ark they are showing right. us the presence the showing us the the entry into the world as 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 the Lord did when he explained how he wanted the tabernacle made explained how he wanted the ark made and was there present with the Israelites in the desert. And then the Ark is lost, but now it's found. Yes. Yes. So I will say we have that we've had a very select audience. Mel and Fat, thanks for hanging out with us. <laughs> yeah. And Fat saying, it's Hail Holy Queen by Scott Hahn. Yes. Did I say it wrong? Mm -hmm. um, Scott Hahn has a nice little book on Hail Holy Queen, which shows the the resonance here between the Ark of the, the the Covenant and Mary as Ark, and it's definitely there in the scriptures. And Scott was a Presbyterian before he became Catholic, so all mm -hmm. all former Presbyterians who are worried about the way Mary um, appears in the scriptures, Scott can verify. <laughs> if you study the scriptures long enough. <laughs> Even as a Presbyterian, you're going to end up Catholic because yeah. the mystery is revealed there. Yeah. And that rooster definitely yeah. agrees with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. Al Capone agrees. Al Capone agrees. <laughs> okay, well, we hope that clears yeah. it all up. We hope that now you understand why we've called ourselves the Mosaic Ark because we are yeah. servants of Our Lady in the presence of Our Lord. And we hope to bring you to this understanding of the mysteries by way of our storytelling and the and the um, juxtapositions of the images so that you can start seeing these patterns that we promise are real. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when, yes. once you're inside them, you know that they're real. But I, 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 I grant that sometimes it takes a little bit of digging, right? So that we get, we get lost and thinking we're looking for a gold box in a, in a, in a well of souls. We're not. Yes. Go to, go to mass. <laughs> the ark is there. All right. Thanks for joining us. Good night.